Okay. It's well, it's one a.m. for uh, one p.m. for me, but uh, stream is up. So I guess we can start this masterclass. Um, this one will be around foliage, foliage and atmosphere. I'll be mainly talking about how to use trees in this um, project, like how to use bushes and how to use trees in order to create certain atmosphere. So I want to kind of give you some tips and tricks on how to easily improve your builds by using trees and bushes and atmosphere in a correct way. Hi, I, um, you can't hear me? Hmm. Maybe you turn on volume on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to create atmosphere with trees, how to use them correctly, how to benefit your um, to benefit your structure and to help it really pop out and showcase it. So yeah, just that because I think that's something a lot of people like don't really think enough of. So. I think main theme of this masterclass will be think about what you're doing and and do it. So first of all, I'm kind of going to go about some realistic stuff. So how do trees grow in nature? How we can adapt that in Minecraft and to make yeah to make a realistic attempt. After that, I'm going to talk about um, more artistic stuff. So which trees? um fit to which structures um it's uh, like how to like how to choose the right trees for the right structures for example because usually you use trees not on their own but to, to help structures pop out and then i'll i'll have a, like a big example for you for that as well and I hope we have time enough in the end to also build something. And I would like to show you how trees and um, foliage can heavily uh, change the atmosphere of a build. So that's what I prepared so far. I guess stream's working. Mm. I guess I have. Uh, so I guess let's let's go to the to the first plot I prepared here, which um, it's kind of like just a forest edge. So my goal here is to do a realistic attempt on my builds. I I think that's a lot easier if you do that by making your trees on a rather large scale, like at least two to one, maybe three to one. For latest um, build or show um, yeah, showcase, I will uh, use also smaller scales. But for the first three, I'm going to use that really large scale to um, show a few things. So this one is about um, and this one is about a forest edge. This is like um, yeah, I just want to show how a forest edge in nature flows. I do have like a reference picture for this one as well. Um, let me get it for you. Here. Um, I mean, that's not the same first edge that uh, I use as a reference point for this build, but it proves the point. So that you have like a very gradient flow of like the trees getting smaller and smaller towards the edge of the forest. Usually you would have tall trees in the center as they need to grow taller to get more light. And they will become smaller and smaller the further you go out. This is also like beneficial for the forest. First of all, the ones are out of more, they don't need to grow at high to get more sun. But also if like wind or storms come through, they will be easily to go over the forest because they build a kind of a roof out of leaves. And that way storms don't do as much damage to forests when they grow naturally. So this is what I kind of try to do, uh, to do here. I have made like a field in the center and then the trees grow taller and taller towards uh, the center of the forest. Um, I would like to ma maybe already here point out that I don't use a lot of tree type variants. This is um, like I have the assets behind that if you want to see them. I only have one big 
kind of tree for the main ones and then a few smaller bushes in this case they still look like trees because they're rather big but um a few more types of bushes that with small bushes being at the very end and big bushes um towards the center um also i would like to take or you like to show you some times i do use i'll let you show you how to use them exactly probably um but here you will probably see that i used a more dark brown gray tones i guess this is kind of towards an, a desert a desert mesa i'm the edge of the field in the center and then went to bluish dark greenish colors when it comes to uh, the trees in the forest so it's like also this gradient i guess like the green in the forest is more lush there you could argue that there is more water maybe um that there are shadows so you can use this by changing the biomes of your build it's probably worth noting that here Mm, I usually do that. I usually take the tall tree first, but and then work myself to the smaller ones because the tall trees are usually the ones that like really pop and take longer to build. Um, you can do it the other way around. Uh, yeah. So um, biomes won't show up if you do a render of your build. So it's probably like using biomes is mainly something you can do for in-game experience. If we go to the second um, build I did here is also a forest edge, but this time it is one in an area that has been um, has been edited by humans. Like this is this is a forest. This is inspired by an area in Germany, somewhere in the northwestern of Bavaria. If that says anything to any one of you, I also got the second picture here for like a reference picture of another of these types of forest. It's definitely worth noting that in these kind of areas, there is mainly only like one kind of tree in the forest. Um, I guess it's kind of monocultures. So you easily get along and you get a good atmosphere just with using one kind of tree. But then if it goes towards the river, I did use, I think, two or three more types of bushes. Um, to make a transition towards the river. As you can see in this picture, this transition is very sharp. It also like, um, you can see that by, if a storm comes through, these do a lot more damage to forests as they go inside of them and are able to, I guess, attack the trees from every side. Um, also here, I mean, I used mainly one biome for my grass area and um, I think a few more inside of the forest and also some yeah some little details these i also edited like small areas of bushes and smaller trees on the outside here to like um yeah show that a bit more good um i would also take a quick um second on this terrain to talk about rivers and how rivers interfere here with terrain. And there is also a reference picture for this one to maybe highlight the difference between rivers in lower areas and um, areas which are in high mountains. Um, so in this one, you can see that the trees grow directly to the edge of the river, which kind of indicates that it is in a lower area. And also like, uh, yeah, more with an area of more human interference and in contrast to that you can look at areas which are in high mountains and that you can take to indicate that your um your build is like really high elevated even though it mustn't not really have the mountains so here and um, this is actually a river um in the very south of germany as i know that there, there is this one um, we can see that in mountain areas, there is like gravel fields around the central river and uh, the trees are not able to grow directly to it. This is due to some various um, factors. For example, in mountains, river gets flooded a lot more with also gravel, which happens in spring when all of the snow is melting and then those rivers rapidly rise and bring gravel to that area, but also Kind of yeah kill the trees so 
this is why there's the difference. I have an example for it, rivers and mountains as well. Um, good. So I guess let's, oh, I should also mention something here as well. The way I use grass in my builds, you will later see them. I will give an example, but for me personally, I set myself the goal that you are unable to see how I place this grass so that there is like no visible brush, no visible simplex, which is why I use very weird combinations of simplexes that I will briefly go over later. But just to make it more natural looking, I don't want the human eye to see really how this has been placed. Um, also, oh, well, let's talk about that in the next one. In the third build, I wanted to highlight the difference between or the difference between heights in trees. So you can get layers. In this case, I built several sections where some of the trees are taller and then they have like, oh, not really affluent, but they have a transition to a lower layer of trees with, with smaller trees. And you could even argue that there are like these little bushes which are even smaller trees. So we have like older areas in the forest where the trees are bigger. We have lower areas where maybe the trees have been cut out or there has been a river or they can't grow as tall. And um, this kind of layering is mostly probably popular in jungles. I got a picture for you here as well. Um, in this picture, you can see the layers in a jungle. You can see those really high um, jungle giants. You can see like normal trees. And at the very bottom, you can see bushes. In this case, as it is, I guess, in this build as well, it's more or less a fluent transition from high trees uh, to, to small trees. So we have this, yeah, also like a gradient and to show which trees are older, which trees live, uh, stand in an older area of the forest and which are in a younger. I wanted to build a spruce forest in this case to also highlight something else. Because if you um, make atmospheres in Minecraft, I would suggest that you get creative with your atmospheres, that you don't say, oh, well, I'm going to build a jungle now, or I'm going to be uh, build a medieval mixed forest, but to go a little bit crazy. So in this case, I got a tiger biome with like blue flowers on the ground to yeah, kind of get like a different vibe to it. And I don't know, I hope it worked well. Um, also, maybe I should talk in this one about the detailing of trees, as in my opinion, the detailing of the trees and of the rest of the terrain should work together. So don't make a completely flat terrain with hardly any details and then put loads and loads of details in the trees. That's uh, kind of doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work good at all. Mm. Also something to note about this terrain um, is the way I, again, use biomes, brushes, but um, also um, biomes, bushes, but also like grass and flowers and um, um, materials I make my ground out of. So we have like this spot right here, which has hardly any trees on it. Like it doesn't have any of the medium size, but also none of the big size trees. And this area is therefore direct under the sun. So what I whoops, what I did here is that this area is, in my case, the greenest, I guess, the lightest one. Um, so this area is highlighted by another type of grass. In this case, as there are no trees above the grass, I got um, higher grass sitting here so i have more ferns more more grass there's there are hardly any blocks that are unoccupied by a kind of foliage block and then as we transition into the main or in the dense forest there is um this transition from um where i have like loads of grass to more or less and less grass so as we go into the forest, I also put in more bushes to like have higher details. But um, yeah, there are also less less grass blocks, and I guess there are also some small bushes here. Another thing that I do, we might want to go back to the other one because it's more visible here. If you look like from an angle like this. 
Um, going from left to right, we go deeper and deeper into the forest. It's not the best example because there's this river in between, but you can see that I use mainly grass blocks for areas that are like directly um, um, under the sunlight. And I hardly use any grass uh, under trees. So I mainly use just um, coarse dirt. I guess in the other terrains, it's mainly coarse. So in this case, there's also some hot soil mix in. Uh, I'll put those trees uh, for download or this this schematic after the masterclass. Um, but this the tree pack doesn't have these trees, and these are all specifically built for this masterclass. Um, yeah, so under the trees there, I also put usually put like mushrooms. Um, sometimes I put in forests or tree stems, or like just some logs. Um, not in these two. In the first one, there are probably some. Um, so yeah, this transition with grass blocks really indicates where you're currently standing. And it is so simple. You just don't have to put grass on the trees, but um, cause dirt, dirt or whatever. And it will um, easily um, like get a much better atmosphere and much better transition. Um, now, I guess, are there any questions to this three? into these three builds here as then i would go on to the next topic i guess um can look in the stream maybe. um i guess there are no questions do you uh, do you have a method of suggesting moss and forest um as an alternative so um for moss under forest i don't really um use um uh, most on the forest i usually would just use um bushes i guess i don't really i don't really suggest moss if i do then it's mainly just with grass blocks that i would use because i mean in forests like the grass not the tall grass blocks but the normal grass blocks because usually there's no really not a lot of grass growing inside the forest, but rather moss. So I guess you can use that. But the head said no, I don't really indicate or specifically indicate moss in a certain way. Um, I think you've talked it. Uh, do you think about grass blocks? Oh, grass blocks are sleeve. Oh, actually, that's a good point, yeah. So um, I have a pretty strict opinion about grass blocks on leaf. Um, if you go on the YouTube channel of Felix and me or Spinny and me, we have a tutorial on trees there and I only use grass blocks as leaves in this tutorial. The reason behind this is that, um, especially for players with not a good PC, you if you mix grass blocks and leaves together, if you go further away, there is this map map um, applied by um, Minecraft, which will basically set all of your uh, leaf textures for leaves that are further away to that black. Yeah, it looks horrible, but if you like, it it happens. At least for me, it happens if I'm like more than thirty blocks away from a um, person. So yeah, that's yeah, not not really good. So if you use grass blocks and like tall grass blocks and leaf mixed together this might look you can able to adjust the color of those two very well with biomes but if you fly away then the texture of the leaves are going to change and, and the the grass blocks and the leaves in terms of like the color they use are going to hit each other so bad that it um that it will just look awful so in my opinion, you can use, or I would suggest to use leaves in or grass as leaves. But if you do so, you need to do it over your whole project. Like every tree in this project needs to have only grass blocks or that sort of blocks, like all of those with that X um, shape in the center. And please don't mix them with leaf blocks because I think those two like look completely different and they will never work together. I guess that is kind of a good transition to my next topic. So what? let's go to the center here. And um, let's look maybe about what trees work together and what doesn't, and how to use trees. 
so in this case, I made um, seven, seven examples of a set of trees. Uh, to the very left, we got a um, very handmade bone meal grown vanilla tree, which is luckily um, pretty much the size as the rest of them are as well. And to the right, we got one that is very, very detailed. Um, so I guess we can like show you a little bit closer. I want to show you here how there are different ways to detail trees and how to use different ways. And these have to like, first of all, fit together with the detailing you do on your terrain, but they also have to fit with your structures if you're doing very well and like with each other. So in general, don't mix different detail levels of trees together. It usually won't work. I'm, I'm at the very center currently uh, in the bed where the trees are, the seven black grids of trees. Um, so to the very right, I got I built something I tried to, to get as, as detailed as I can. I didn't use a clipboard brush for my leaves here. I just built the trunk and then spammed leaves around it, mixed them up a little bit with um, birch leaves, although, yeah, I placed them over command. I used um, buttons. I think I used buttons. Didn't you use buttons? I didn't use buttons, but I used um, fences and other colored slabs to add more detail. I one area where there's like a dead um, branch on the tree to make it also look a little bit more rough. So you can use this kind of tree for very, very highly detailed, even into that over detailed um, area to, to like use some sort of these trees. The other ones won't really work then. Once we go to the left, I will lose more and more detail. At first, there are those dead branches that I lost. I also um, uh, left my uh, fences here to, yeah, not to, to put many more. This is like a lot cleaner. I also used a um, clipper brush, and this is like to show you how clipper brush works. So I just copy this uh, structure like this, clipper brush, and then paste it at the very edge of very um, branch to get my like my leaves. And if you use a very diffuse brush like this, you will get um rather, I don't know, let's still say noisy looking tree. And the main difference between this one and the next one next to it is just the clipper brush. So I use something here that is, as you can see, a lot less noisy, that is a lot more clean. And so this will directly change kind of the style of, of your tree you will get a lot of cleaner shapes. I still use those um, birch leaves to get some, some details here. And I guess this is, yeah, kind of common to use some sort of that. Um, exactly. if, you, if we go further to the left, we'll lose the birch leaves as detail blocks. So this is, and it will be an even more clean shape for a tree. It's kind of, it's kind of, a little bit like vanilla shape you will get. And at that point, you can't really do a lot. In the very center, I'm currently at the center tree. And in the left, one to the left, I mean, there's not a lot of stuff I can still remove as detail, but I can make my, uh, my clipboard brushes basically boxes. And yeah, I mean, that kind of looks like Minecraft. So this will work for very clean shapes. And I mean, I would suggest using trees like this still. Um, I think it's, I think it, yeah, it's very boxy and even more clean. And so the next step would basically be uh, only one box anymore. I moved it up a little bit to make it uh, not, not just a box. Um, you can still just, yeah, use a cube of leaves here. So to make it like even more smooth. So if you have very, very clean things, if you hardly put any structure as uh, details in your structures, then no, Minecraft trees are more like this one. I would just something between those two. Um, but these are like, if you don't put any details, then probably this would be worth using. And in comparison to vanilla trees, I should mention two things to you to use the box tree for. Yeah, kind of. Um, 
The vanilla trees have a few problems with them. First of all, the trunk is not in the center. This tree looks like it would pretty much fall to the right very fast, so you can't really um, use this, or like that's obvious. And I'm not a big fan of the way they use their clipboard brushes because, like, always the same shape as I do it, but we'll do it with similar things. Um, so yeah, that's why I would usually not use vanilla trees, but more something maybe in between those two, or this one, or this one here. Um, I also wanted to prove that this is not just possible with oak trees, as they are the most common ones, but also with spruce trees. So I did the same thing here. We're on the very left, we have our vanilla tree, which kind of bothers me that it doesn't have like um, a top like this. Uh, I can see why they didn't do it, but uh, yeah, it kind of bothers me. So all of mine do have that. And so to go from the left to the right very fast, I also like, in this case, I would usually not suggest to use branches in terms of slabs for small size trees as this, but in this case, it kind of works. I have um, a mixed up trunk here. I have also like a mixed um, combination of leaves and put some flower pots as like, yeah, and it's here as well. From there to there, I basically removed the slabs and the um, trunk coloring. From here, I removed flower pot. Then I removed the different um, kinds of, of leaves here. And now we're at the same point as we are over here that we can't really like change any details anymore, but only the shape of the tree. So from here to here, I went to a very structured, um, very, um, yeah, um, I would say symmetrical kind of tree, which is still kind of looks uh, detailed, a little bit better than, or more detailed than the vanilla tree, but still, I guess this is the close one to vanilla as well. And if we want to get rid of those details as well, we might as well just use this one here. Uh, oh, oops, time's flying. Let's um, hurry up a bit. So I got some structures here. This one is by Tuva, this one is by Zinju. Um, I got this one because I think, I think it's kind of relatable. And I put in three trees here in the front. And maybe the people who are currently in Minecraft might want to like go type RL, uh, RL or C, like right, left, or center in the chat for what kind of tree they think would fit best to this building. Um, just, just type R for right, or right, or left, or center, middle, and which which you would use for this. Perfectly. Everyone so far chose right and someone left. Well, um, I think this is a good example for where I would use the right one because this kind of detailing fits very well. And the fact that most of you chose the one that I did means that we probably have the same taste. And um, I think all of you could intentionally do that correctly. Um, so yeah, I think the center one is just way too clean. Thanks, you pixel. And the left one is just way too detailed for this. So in this case, it's definitely the right one. I think we can do the same thing with this one right here, with that project or little house within you. Just type right or left, which one you would use. I guess it's going to be an easy thing for all of us. Yeah, everyone's using left. And the middle, perfect. OK, in this case, I think it's also obvious that I used the left one. I also changed here that I just used fences as a trunk to make it like less thin. But besides that, I think it's basically the one I'm um, over there. So yeah, I guess you all see here, we have a very, very clean house that fits with a very, very clean tree. And if you were to put the right tree in, then this is like the art of using trees, like choose the right trees from the right tree pack. because. And um, a lot of people say like, oh, tree pack I published, it's helped so much, but it, for example, doesn't have trees like this in it. So if you have a detailed building style, this, my tree pack won't be helpful for you. You will need to use some other one, like ones for, from Aramillon, it's pretty good. So um, yeah, this will, this is, uh, this is something you need to keep in mind. Just the tree with the right detailing for the right um, house. So if we go to the other side, um, I should probably mention that my my trees are usually like something like in between those two central, a little bit to the right. Um, 
I will only use trees that kind of are in that area from now on for the rest of the masterclass. It's, it's just type of structure that fit. So maybe let's talk a little bit about art. So I got the structures here from Hercules. And I want this structure to really pop out. I want my trees and my surrounding area to benefit the structure and stick it out much more. Uh, what about forward? Uh, oh, this is this was for the houses here. Um, so let's, yeah, I want this to pop. And there are two very common things you can do in artistic, um, in artistic builds or, or um, photos to uh, um, show or to, to help your um, structure. So this is the first one I would first talk about to you, which is by an amazing photographer. Just keep this link open and later look at his other work. It is pretty damn amazing. But in this case, I would like to talk to you about how he uses like a point of view for a second. It's common art sense, but um, kind of uh, pretty useful. So every line in this picture um, directs you to the top right of the corner. So we have this fire front here, we, but we also have the staircase in the front. We have those three people on the roof. Also, um, there is a road. There are pipes that all of them lead to this very center. Every human looks in that center. So this is why your attention is dragged very drastically towards a specific point. And as this is a common thing in photography and, and art, we can apply this to Minecraft as well. So this is what I did in game now. Um, I took my build and then I made like two lines here that point towards the outside a little bit to, to uh, yeah, a little bit away from them. And my main trees I'm going to use are like um, cypresses um, here. They I will just place them in the on the diamond line here, as they will then guide the a viewer's eyes towards this central building. Also, I used something similar. If you fly on top, we can see it that um, all of the other colors are already put in, like the gold and the Iron blocks will guide you towards the center. My paths are parallel to the edges of the building, which will guide you to the center, as well as like everything is towards the center, to, uh, leading you towards the building. And this is how I want to showcase this build. So if we go from number five to number six now, um, this is how I finished everything. Um, the tree pack. For this is also behind. It's not that many trees actually, but I think it does the job. So I used um, first of all, you can see that I put in the terrain, and I would like to show you quickly something else that I use. This is a project by Liam Mark on ArtStation. Here you go. Um, another common thing in in art, like something really basic, everyone should know if they're doing art, is how to, or that you can make central pieces you want to have very light, where you, and the area around it dark to also bring the viewer's attention to the center, which is why trees are usually for um, rather light buildings, very, very simple to use, because they intentionally already have a, a darker color, like a darker green color that will directly bring the viewer towards the center. So this is like really, a really good application of trees if you do that. Um, so yeah, I did some some green area. I put a darker biome in the center for my rose bushes to have a little bit of a detail here. But it shouldn't be like I didn't put a statue here or anything or a tree because that would block the view of the building. And just edit it the rest of it. Um, from this point on, I should probably mention that in the stream, um, Dorzor is using the 1.14 texture pack, which I'm using as well. This is quite beneficial if you're using um, if you're using wheat because wheat textures in 1.14 is amazing. If that looks ugly to you, we can um, quickly replace um, the wheat to dandelions, which gives you a completely different atmosphere. But it's kind of the same thing. It's a little bit distracted because that's really lush yellow green color, but 
I mean, the weed one's also yellow, so I do prefer the weed, I think, in one of 12 and one of 14 textures, but I guess that's up to you. So, um, this is how I, I framed this building, and well, I hope that works rather well. So now let's go to the next one, which is this. Uh, in this case, I got my structures from Tiro Yuru, who kindly donated them to me, and I made like a little bit bigger terrain for you to show a few things. First of all, um, the way I use trees here. I have um, already also again like only one kind of trees. I think that's absolutely enough. Um, if you fly around here, you can see the the, the assets pack I used. It's basically what nine assets for a 200 by 200, no, 150 by 150 build. No, 200 by 200 is I think. So yeah, it's nine assets for 200 by 200. It's not a lot, but if you walk through this, I think it's actually enough. So um. I actually don't know the English name for these high trees, but yeah, all of them are basically in one area. Then we have these bushes in one area. We have a uh, open field area and some some wheat. Mm. This project is actually to show you something else. I'm a little bit short. Everyone should know that um, thing about screenshots. If this build is basically built for the perspective I'm currently in right now, but um, if you're doing screenshots, please always use a um, field or field of view of 70 or below, as then you won't get these weird stretching to the end, and only then it would look good. Um, I see that a lot of people that apply at Builders Refuge and they have like these completely, um, yeah, weird field of views that will don't, won't benefit your build. If you're standing about where I am or currently spectating me, you will see that um, I did hear something similar. I framed my central structure in the very center right now with trees from the left and to the right. I also like made it more interesting to hide it a little bit behind pictures. I have the central tree in the front that is supposed to be some sort of yeah highlight in the foreground. We have this um, house on the right to make it look a bit more interesting, and like also that bridge in the center as like a center detail. The whole build is basically just um, built around this very shot. Um, yeah, so um, I would just using that's one of the reasons I would suggest using um, fill a uh, fill a few. Um, also, something here I wanted to note is because of the atmosphere I wanted to go through. Um, one second, I'll. Um, those, those the river. I used this gravel theme here um, earlier that I, I wanted to uh, like show you up from mountains. This is the example I used. Um, how I did them is very tedious. I just carved that out by hand. I suppose there are faster tools, but the tool won't really work here because you can't get these these other shapes and. Yeah, if you try to do a river like that, just do an organic one. But about rivers and erosion, probably Deco does tomorrow a masterclass. Uh, later a masterclass. Oh, we'll see. Um, to the path I made this. It's basically just a clipboard. Oh, I don't have it here. Um, the idea is basically that you take a clipboard of a certain size, copy it, um, and paste it somewhere else. I'll quickly do it over here. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just a pattern. Do um, slash slash paste hashtag. I uh, know what is slash slash sent hashtag. It's just like this. Um, this command very useful for paths. You need to make sure that your clipboard is larger than what I just showed you here because, well, you can easily see the pattern and it's something you usually don't want to. Or hashtag copy, yeah. Um, in my case, it was bigger. Um, and also, it's necessary that if you do something like this with a lar rather lar uh, small pattern, to also like, yeah, do rather windy paths so that you won't be able to recognize those those straight lines. Um, which I kind of tried here. If you look closely, you can find the pattern. And um, I mean, someone might be able to figure out what this is. Um, a few words to the field, um, or to the field, the wheat fields. 
I didn't just put in normal wheat as this would be too clean and wouldn't fit with the rest of the atmosphere. So I'm mixing it up a little bit, just a very, very tiny bit with um, not as grown a wheat with grass and just open blocks. Um, and for the, I don't know, maybe something again here to, to mention is that I also did transition from like grass area to field area with a uh, little rim of bushes here that you can probably see. It has like bushes and higher grass into it to make it a little bit more smooth. Um, around the paths, I smoothed it out even more. I put in even more bushes. And so, yeah, okay, I guess. And the flowers are placed with normal brush. We also have, um, again, just stirred as the ground block for the central forest. and. There is like this little intersection in between I mentioned before, which has both of them, so it gives like a transition. And I should probably also mention that the trees hopefully are um, built in a similar style to the structure, hopefully. Um, another thing to say about this one is that besides some of the details of the houses, the whole terrain actually is marketplace friendly. So I didn't use any world edit gimmicks that would pop off besides grass on farmland, now that I think of it. Um, so this might be like, this might be useful if you do marketplace maps or maps you want to sell. Can, you can do it. It doesn't take a lot of long or like a massive time to, to make all of this. As soon as you have your assets, which I suppose most of you are using tree packs, you can do this in an hour easily. And it doesn't really matter if you use any larger area. So are there any questions to like the, the artistic part here um, to how to use fit to restructure this, how to um, frame builds and how to apply that to atmosphere? Are you, are, what? I don't think that relates to my masterclass. No, okay. Um, let's talk about a last structure I brought you here. This one is um, the areas around the world. Yeah, exactly. What Annotate says, like you can you can funnel the viewer's interest. Uh, we'll use uh, this one is the perfect example. Like we funnel the interest of the viewer towards the central building. Um, okay. For, for this one, I got here for you a structure by Solarix. I put it into a terrain. I already pre-colored the terrain again with like areas that I would put in the trees again in a second. And also I have how did you turn running? Um like um I also pre-put in the, the biomes, but as we don't have a lot of time, do you want me to show how to build the trees or some of the trees that fit to this, or should I just paste in the asset? Because then I would quickly build one, I guess. Okay, so let's quickly build one tree. And um, for the right area, I would like to um, do a rather swampy, rather dark atmosphere because I think that's actually the first thing that would you would see or imagine when you look at this build. Um, so we kind of need some sort of swamp tree. I'm going to build it over here quickly. Oh, what do we have here? We need dark oak. So let's just build a little mining curve. We don't have a lot of time, so I kind of need to hurry a bit. Yeah, like a little bit of a curve. Let's fix it up with a trunk. This, there will be a tree master class tomorrow, so uh, no need for me to go into highly detailing. I won't accept TPAs now. Uh, GP to someone else. Um, so yeah, then I guess what we need next are some branches. So what I did here in these trees are that I kind of curve them all them a little bit down. Oh, um, I forgot to put in my paper brush I wanted to prepare. 
So, um, I'm currently making a tree. I guess that was. Uh, I won't be a pine tree. I'll do a dead swamp tree, I guess. Or not, I guess. I, I am going to make a dead swamp tree. <laughs> sort of. I think it's the interesting, most interesting tree I used in this web. So we can like move in the uh, smooth the edges a little bit and uh, put in even more branches here. Uh, for spruce to be similar to this, should there be branches always going slightly? I mean, you can do um, spruce trees that have branches that go up and you can have spruce trees with branches that go down. It really depends on what you do. If you have a very, uh, um, very clean build or you want it to look very ordered and not wild, then I would suggest actually making them a little bit go up. But in general, as I probably said before, don't use the slabs as branches for for small um, scale trees unless you want to go really high detailed and or a lot like really rough i guess i should say because then it will work otherwise it usually won't none okay i guess that should be enough branches now mm, i'm always having trouble during the leaves part. Um, I guess we will talk about the leaves part. Important to keep in mind when you um, build trees, this is probably a bad example for this, Like, but um, if you build trees, then only put leaf clipboard brushes at the very edge of a branch. Never or hardly never put anything in between. Add another branch if you need to. So that's why branches or putting branches incorrectly is really important because they will determine the way your leaves will look in the end and the shape, whole shape of your tree. Also, if you use rather large clipboard brushes as I do, you can easily make your branches that you build with slabs or, or full blocks or whatever really small as you won't really see them. I like uh, they, the tree will instantly get very wide. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so, uh, I quickly need to go game mode three, then copy this in the center. All of you should probably know how clipboard brushes work. Um, clipboard a. So those are the two commands I'm using, a uh, clipboard brush and, well, a mask on air to not rip and destroy my build. So let's just, ah, sorry, wrong. Let's just put that on, in this case, on some some branches. Oh, that was too much. Let's remove this one again. Uh, maybe here. And then yeah, let's use, I think, yeah, birch leaves would be fine. Um, some birch leaves around here to make it a little bit more. So these will have a lot less leaves in them. So I guess we can already replace the leaves. Um, wrap 22, 18, 14. Then I use this tool a lot to instantly replace that I fucked up here. Uh, I use this tool a lot to replace um, blocks. So let's quickly put some soul sand in here. Um, so replace the whole tree um, to uh, dark oak full stems, then added in back a little bit of that uh, dark oak planks again. And now, I, what I did in the trees I'm going to show you in a second is that I used some mushrooms, so tree mushrooms to put on that. So let's just use this block. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do with this, but yeah. So in a nutshell, that is how I built the trees I'm about to show you. Um, give me a second. Shimmer tail. 
I got a few more of them. I also built some bushes. And let's just put them here so that you can see what I have been using. So as you see, I did bigger ones than the ones over there. Looks kind of similar, actually. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, I did those dark, dark a little bit good ones. Then I have um, uh, rather detailed, as the structure is also rather detailed, um, spruce trees here. They are actually big enough so that it's actually worth using slabs as branches. Not a lot, not too much detail here, and some bushes to like fill everything up. So I guess let's now we do need some brushes. I'll quickly have to write some um, skin brushes. Give me one second. Um, it will just be a normal, I will just use the basic normal schematic brushes. If you want to know more about schematic brushes, I think Pluto, you there, wanted to talk about that tomorrow in his stream master class. So, um, schematic brush, what do we have? We have pines here. So, we need the dead ones. I already saved the schematic so that this is a little bit faster now. Uh, I have ground and I have small, uh, small effect. Let's go back to my picture so that I kind of know what I'm doing. Okay, so in this um, masterclass or in this in this terrain, <laughs> I um, have like these areas, and so as you probably saw already in the way I put in. <laughs> Uh, I put in the blocks. I have like probably a very dense forest area in Lapis. Then it will be getting lighter and lighter towards the open area just in front of the castle. So I'm using those um, the trees I just put in. I'm sorry, no, you can't make any money off me anymore. That's very disappointing. Um, so yeah, I just... So I lay these these areas out with with brushes, just normal brushes size one or two or three is totally enough. As the way we're going to use this later, you won't really be able to see these um, edges anymore. So rather unnecessary to do this way to, to with too much effort. So next up, as I just quickly put them in here. We can use this dead tree I wanted to have. Oh, so the schematic brush tool pays random trees. Yeah, I selected, um, let me actually just show you the ones, the schematic brush. So this is just basic schematic brush if you use trees. Like you have your um, definition for the schematic, um, this star at star to, um, to give it a random rotation, like use a random number of the ones I selected and then a random rotation. You can put another stand behind to flip it also randomly, but I don't care. Place bottom will mean that it will be placed on the bottom, and y off equals zero, uh, double point zero will mean that it will be um, moved, I think, two blocks down, which is really helpful. I guess that's, yeah. Um, I use clipboard brushes rather than copy or any, I have full copy or any of the other ones usually because that. Um, they will always use the uh, schematic brush will always use the center of the schematic to paste it and if you use father brushes they will usually use the point of where you copy and um well at least for my tree pack the ones <laughs> that have to use it it's not the case they are sometimes copied hundreds of blocks away from that and that won't be helpful so let's put in the dead trees oh it's not a dead tree let's use the dead trees um i will use them a lot less like not a stance because i yeah i want to give this like a little bit darker um swampy area I'll put some here as well um oh fuck we only have six minutes more well that will i'll guess i'll be a little bit over time but so so far so good like putting in those now let's get a little bit to the realistic part i would like to um add around these dead trees some bushes so that like we have 
we have the trees and then we have bushes around it. And placing bushes randomly around your map will technically or generally look extremely awful. So think about, as I said at the beginning of the advanced class, think about what you're doing. Putting bushes around the stems of trees that might be old and might have bushes around them usually, I mean, can be a good idea. Yeah. A few times by now. Um, I won't bother too much about trees floating right now. I don't think there should be any. Um, we will see. It's usually this one spot where a tree floats. Ah, not this time. So more bushes here. I'll just put it around every single tree. I mean, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. And also one thing. Uh, did I miss one? Uh, no, it doesn't look like. I have still these small ones you probably saw over there, and I will use those to um, clean up forest edge right here. What is happening here? Oh, fuck. Um, give me a second. Let's, I quickly need to change the brush. Uh, oh, I swear it again. Uh, that should work now. Yeah. OK. Um, that's why I often use folders for schematics. Uh, not in folders right now. But yeah, um, I'll use this to seal off the forest edge a lot more, and also fill in this area where I'll put it through here. Um, so seal it off. And next part, as we are running out of time fast, I will not. Is it lagging currently? Uh, so, okay. Um, this is how I place trees and bushes in this pack. As we are running out of time fast. I have to apologize that I'm not going to go into detail on how to use um, the, the foliage or the rest of the foliage I'm about to do. Um, this will go pretty fast. Um, I'll maybe after that we can do a QA where I explain that, but let's fill in some of the rest of the details. So we need to put in this command. And we need to put in uh, not pointing, this one. And I got two more for this build, this one and this one. Oh, no. I think I got everything. OK, now that might be um, a lot to see right now. Let's already um, fix. Oh no, yeah, yeah, let's fix quickly the colors. So we want to have gold to be replaced to grass. We want to have emerald ore to be replaced to grass and three or one. Uh, I think, no, I didn't use one. Let's use diamond blocks, 8% um, grass, 2%. Uh, yeah, I mean, OK, that doesn't look amazing. I uh, 22 to only this. Um, so now comes in the point where it's like really important to how you use biomes. And I pre-save them so that we can put in some um, biomes quickly. Uh, let's use this command here. And there we got our biomes. Um, also, one more thing to change. Um, in this case, I have to do some slight changes to the build, which is basically going that I'm changing the color of the windows. Wrap 159.154.252.12. And what do we have? Uh, 9.8. Uh, yeah, well, 
Um, could have done, should have left a little bit of detail, but in general, um, color didn't fit in. So that's how I create a dark atmosphere. Um, let's do something very different with the same um, with the same build. Um, quickly need to change my schematic brushes. I know that it's like time now. I'm sorry, I'm trying to hurry. What do we have here? We have big. Uh, this will be fixed. I need some big ones. I need some small ones. Small bush. I need, and I need some, um, how do you call them? Low bush. Low bush. So this will be something very, very, um, this, this might be a little bit shocking because this is going to be extremely different. Um, first of all, you can probably see by the trees that I'm using that this is absolutely nothing that will be um, easily done, but I will use my, um, uh, that, yeah, it will be rather similar to this, but uh, yeah, I have, this is not going to be a swampy area, as you can probably see by the trees, then uh, I quickly need to look at something. Yep, so once again, let's um, actually use these ones, or no, I'm wrong. Let's use these ones. Yeah. Um, these ones to kind of modify our, um, or kind of like change a little bit to always also fix up the forest edges here. Um, this. Um, can, Yeah, so what I'm like, in general, the having these these V-shaped areas here, oh god, that must be super bad for watching in stream right now. Um, using these V-shaped um, things usually like kind of do a well job at kind of looking, um, and kind of looking realistic. Mm. So again, like from here. Um, yeah, so I've kind of follow maybe put some and we want to put some here, I want to put some here. Okay, now let's pick up the forest edges even more by using these bushes a bit, a bit um, put some, some um, make it make the forest more interesting. Oh, uh, I forgot to do something. Um, actually, uh, slash slash schematic. Let me give quickly show you the assets I'm using for this. Uh, yeah, so those are the assets I'm using. I completely misplaced them, but okay. Uh, yeah, those are the assets over there. Uh, so that you can like see what we're about to do. Also shows that I only have like one big kind of trees, and then all of the rest is basically bushes. So you don't need a lot of trees to get a good atmosphere. In fact, most of the time, especially if you have like a little bit less clean style um, or a little bit clean style, then you will easily have to, um, it will, less variants of trees will actually benefit your build quite a lot. Oh, I was about to swear again. <laughs> I forgot something. One command we need to do. Um, because I'm using double flowers in this, and I didn't fix them, because I'm only pasting the lower part of the flowers. And um, this can be easily fixed, especially in this case. Wraps here. Um, so ah, oh, that looks so much better now. Here is the command for that. Okay, let's paste some more bushes in here, just to kind of show what we're doing. Mm, some here. Oh, I think it's a good spot for them as well. Um, I would suggest you mainly staying true to your um, initial layout you made. Okay, 
I guess that's enough. Let's um, fill it in with some more life. So this is how I'm using the trees. I'm also like creating this V shape towards the structure and framing it with darker trees in the background so that it pops out more. And also wanted to have like this, um, little bushes sides here in the foreground so that when you look from here, you also have like this little, or from like here, you have this foreground picture. And let's, I also got a whole lot of commands that we need to fix this in. Um, so it's actually, it's just for one. So um, let's use this one first. So I want to have some wheat fields here because I imagine having wheat fields around this would be kind of cool. I have some yellow grass kind of. Same thing here, if you're not watching the stream right now or if you're not using the 1.14 texture pack, this might look a little bit odd, especially as I'm using not the full group, but uh, the one stage below that. But um, yeah, we also need to quickly fix up the, um, the double flowers. Then let's see what I did in terms uh again let's replace the floor to uh path blocks we have path blocks let's use let's use them um quickly fix up the uh area here the steps uh you need to fix this up as well probably um as yeah this that bothers a lot of people if you don't do that so um, then let's replace 129 again to dirt and grass. Let's replace gold to grass. Let's replace diamond to, what are they here? 6% uh, grass, 4% dirt, and replace um, 22 again to dirt. Right. And again, you will see that biome do make quite a difference, which is why I'm again down to talk about a little bit of biome placement after this. But I have them prepared as well, so we can quickly look at this and see how biomes change so much things. I kind of got for a lusher area here, and um, not that big of a biome variant, but you'll see. So. I think this was my masterclass. To quickly sum it up, you think about how trees, let's fly over there, think about how trees grow naturally, think about how trees can be layered, how trees in non-human areas differ from human areas. Maybe do some research about some atmosphere you want to do. As we had an example here, high mountains and two like low areas. And then make sure that you, if you want to support your building, make sure to use the right type of detailing on your building and also don't mix different tellings or different types of like telling types of trees together as an extreme example if you're still with, at cinder build right here the trees to the left and to the right don't fit together don't put them in the same project if you want to support projects then um use common the knowledge from art, like use framing. You can use um, ways to uh, change the point of view of the viewer. This is really important also for if you're doing um, marketplace stuff because you can use these techniques to guide the player directly to where you want them to go. And they will instantly know where they have to go. You can create good atmospheres with little variants of trees. Like as we're in this big tree suit, I only have two different kinds of trees and it's totally enough. You don't have to use 15 different types of trees for a 100 by 100 terrain, it will look rather messy than that. And um, if you have a build, you can do different things with it. You can go for different moods. And this is actually probably the most difficult part to imagine moods that will fit your build because this is the part that you can easily fuck up, but it's like also the part where you can like shine with your build to create stuff that you wouldn't imagine at first. And um, so, yeah. If there, I would actually end this, this stream here. Are there any questions that are completely important so that we still should cover them in the stream? Otherwise, I would go in the Q&A now. Oh, guess. Uh, I guess there aren't any in... Oh, yeah, I got a question. Hmm. 
Um, um, I will show you in Q&A. Um, I will quickly go over how to create grass on top of blocks that doesn't look like vanilla grass and you're not able to see how it is um, as kind of like a treat to, to see. And OK, thank you for listening. I hope this masterclass was helpful for you guys. And um, yeah. Let's have a, to have a talk. Yeah, I'll I'll send a doc and I'll post it. And yeah, hopefully see you maybe next beacon or now in the Q and um, yeah, I'll I'll just join the other channel. <laughs>